Hi, I am Karen. Uh, my company's name is, I've got two of them. One is from my palette to yours. The other one is quaint and creative with Jamie and Karen. Today it's just me. I'm going to be doing a demonstration on salt wash. Salt wash is a paint additive. We just add it to any type of paint and then it will give us the look of a worn and textured piece of um, furniture, art, a frame, it will go on metal, um, just about anything that you can try. So um, I'll just start this video and um, hopefully we'll be able to get through this little piece in one session. If it doesn't dry quite fast enough, it'll be just a little broke up, but that'll be okay. Um, the salt wash comes in a can. There's different sizes. This is the size I have here. And what we do is we do about one part paint to three quarters part um, salt wash. And you can see it's just a powder mixture. It's just a powder additive that we add to our paint. So I'm gonna point you down now towards our surface so that you can see what we're working on. And um, this should be really fun. Okay, so I just have a tray I found at a thrift store. It looks like it's just the bamboo type wood. And it's got kind of a, you know, little section here to hold on to handles. There's a little crack in it here. I'm not worried about that. I think I picked this up for maybe a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty, came home, um, sanitized it, and now I'm going to turn it into a beautiful tray. So I have several different colors and you can do as many colors of um, paint as you want to for your salt wash finish. And we're gonna add the salt wash to the paints that we want on the underneath layer. And then the top layer, um, after we have got this all dried out, is just a straight coat of paint. Um, what I'm doing, I'm gonna just mix in these little, um, these little tiny containers. And I may have to mix more than once, but I don't wanna waste. Once this is mixed up, it needs to be used. But I am gonna get all of these ready. So I've got some Old 57, some Mermaid Tail. I'm kind of going for a little bit of a patinaed look. And so I'm gonna do my blues, greens, and a little bit of an orange here. This one is Summer Crush. It's a light, kind of a warm orange. You can see that color there. All right, and then I've got some Salty Kiss. The paint I'm using today is DIY paint. It is a clay-based paint. Oh, that's a lot of salty kiss. Um, it's my favorite paint. It sticks to anything. I don't have to have any prep, which I love. I right, better move all of this out of my way so that we've got room to work here. I'll put my paint colors down now because I need to get these little things. They'll need to sit over here. So I think after I do these colors, then I'm going to go in and um, cover it with kind of a light gray. All right, so let's just get this mixed up. So we just add the powder right to the paint and I'm just gonna start to stir it. I'm actually stirring it with my application brushes. I want this to be the consistency of a really thick cake batter, maybe a brownie batter or frosting. It's probably just a little bit too thin, but it's getting there. Just gonna put a titch more. When you do order this, it has a, a chart for measuring that you can like actually do full on measurements. It's got an ounce per ounce measurement. Okay, so that's right, look at that, it's just globby. Whoops, there we go, globby, that's what we want. Okay, so there's one, let's just stir up these others. I'm gonna do my application with just a chip brush. These are very inexpensive, really hard bristle. Um, I'm not worried if I ruin them because they're almost to me, they remind me just of a disposable brush. So again, I'm just mixing it here. The reason we want this to be thick is when we apply it, we want it to have peaks and valleys, really stiff peaks and valleys. That's what's gonna create our texture. All right, that one's feeling pretty good. And as you use this more and more, you'll get the feel for how much to mix. You don't need to really sit and measure. That's why I'm just pouring a little bit in at a time here. And oops, that one's gonna get too thick. I might have to, whoops, and I spilled. That's all right. Probably need to add a little more orange to that. Yeah, I got a little bit carried away on that one. 
Well, actually it's gonna be okay. It's just a little bit thicker, which is just fine because it's just gonna get put on. All right, let's see if I can, nope. Maybe if I brush this in here. We don't want to waste it if we don't have to. There we go. And let's brush that off. Add just a little bit more into our Salty Kiss color. And yay, I've got one more small brush, which is what I wanted for the application. And of course, if we were doing a piece of furniture today, I would not use this small of a brush. I'd use a much bigger brush. You can also use a regular paintbrush that is not an angle one. You usually want a just a regular flat square tipped one and full. If you're doing furniture, you want it to be a thick one, not a really fine um, paintbrush that you would be doing to like feather out smooth surfaces with. Because we do need to have um, a brush that's, you know, they get pretty beat up. So, because we pounce with them. So you don't have to use your fine, fine brushes for this. All right. So I am wondering if this one got quite thick enough. Let's see. No, okay, so this one isn't quite thick enough. And the way I could tell is I just pounced my brush up and down in here and I see that my peaks and valleys are not sticking in my container. So I know if they're not sticking here, they're not gonna stick on, they're not gonna stand up on my tray here. So again, we'll mix it good. Okay, now I'm starting to get the peaks, if you can see this. That's what we want is to have those peaks stay standing. Just a titch more. This is a little bit time consuming to start with. And this, I probably haven't um, done enough paint, but like I said, I would rather mix a couple times and not waste my paint. This one we're gonna add just a titch more too. And as it sits, it thickens just a little bit. So I always just kind of go back and forth until I get the exact consistency that I want. Just a tiny, tiny bit more in that one. There we go. Okay. Okay, and you don't have to use your paintbrush to stir this stuff. You can use a palette knife or a, like a popsicle stick, something like that. Okay, now as this first application goes on, we're just gonna start pouncing, okay? And if you wanna, you don't have to have a certain order we're doing multicolors. Yeah, I've got some good peaks and valleys right now with this, so we're in the right direction. Now, because I mixed it with this, I have paint all up in my bristles, which is fine for this. Again, these are just chip brushes, and this will wash out just fine. I'll be able to use these brushes again. You'll probably think this looks kind of like a mess when we just are getting started. But as I put the top coat on, you'll see that um, this is just all what peeks through. Yeah, it's just an up and down motion. It's really fast to do. I'm just gonna get all four colors on in random places. You want to apply it liberally. You do want quite a bit on here. Now, when I start getting down to the very end, I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to scrape all my edges because this is gets really thick and it starts to stick, but I'm going to use every last little drop that I mix up. So as you can see, I'm just scraping it and it's just really thick. It's like, like I said before, like a frosting, really thick cake batter. But that's a lot of product right now that I can go further with this color. I'll just set it down for a minute. Let's get some orange, our orange crush on. Oh, this one's nice and thick. And the 
like the thicker it is, but still workable, the better the texture is gonna be. And that's what we want is we want lots of texture. This one is almost a little too thick. I'm having like, I really have to grab a hold of it, but that's all right too. You just kind of work with it. Don't worry if you're, I'm picking up blue in my brush, not a big deal. Just gonna, cause they're just mixing together. As this starts to dry, so we're, we've still got plenty of time. When it starts to dry is when we will knock down our peaks and valleys. Okay, so let's go to the green, our salty kiss. And throw that in here. Everybody gets intimidated when they start this process of blending colors because like this just looks kind of scary, doesn't it? Like some new strange camouflage color I come up with. But it's not gonna look anywhere near like this when we're done. It's gonna be really pretty. All of this gets covered with our main color, the top color, which in this case is gonna be a gray. Um, and then we sand back and just these little peaks of all these colors are gonna throw, um, show through. So some people, you know, you may not think that this is worth your time and effort, but when you, it's so fun to play in. And when you see the finished product of how pretty this turns out, you realize that all of these different techniques, they really are worth giving a try. It's worth that extra time. Um, you know, I sell my items that I paint and some of this stuff, you know, I don't, a piece could be great without it, but I know it's gonna be so much better with this extra, a few extra steps to do something fun like this. I can get the same colors with a lot, um, with different techniques, but I'm not gonna get this gorgeous texture that comes from the salt wash finish. So you can see, I'm gonna pull this up here. You can see all the little peaks and valleys I'm gonna set it sideways so you can see it there. So those are what we want. We want these raised peaks. And as I, like I said, as it dries, then we're gonna knock those down. And there's a few spots that I don't have what I would consider enough peaks and valleys. So I'm gonna go add just a little more. And I do find, I may mix this thicker than some people but I do like, I love, 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 love texture. So, and you can put this on top of each other to kind of blend a few different colors, which of course I always do. I like to play in my paints, anything I'm working on. We missed a few spots with this dark blue. So let's go back over here with the mermaid tail, make sure we get a little bit of it everywhere. And of course I will do this same process around the edges, but then on the bottom of the tray, I don't want the texture, so I will just paint it. Um, our, the color that goes on top is what will go on the bottom of my tray. All right, so that actually ended up being just about the right amount of paint for this top, which is great. I thought I was for sure gonna have to mix some more, but I'm not. All righty. Okay, we've got some really good peaks. And if you miss a spot, just go in and fill it in with any color. There's no rhyme or reason. Like I said, I'm just trying to make sure I get a little bit of every color throughout. And you don't have to go so crazy on your colors either. Um, I like all of these just because I know um, these are the tones of a patina. So you've got your turquoises, your green, like from a copper patina. And then the orange is gonna act as that drizzle of copper that would show through a patina look. All right, so this is just drying now. That's wet there. So we need to let it dry for just a few minutes. And I will be back. 
We're continuing on with this piece now. I've let it sit and dry for just a couple of minutes. I've still got some wet spots that may be a little too wet to knock off the tops perfectly, but it's um, dry enough that I can start. So what we're gonna do is just take a very soft pressure and just wipe over the edges a bit. Now you can see on this edge here, this is there's not any peaks left. They're not flat by any means. Now it's just got this texture. You can just see it's there's now there's just texture there. All our colors are still the same. Um, one thing about this salt wash is it does not change your colors. So even though it's a you know a whitish powder, it's not going to affect your colors. So you can see the difference in this edge now and all of these um, stark peaks. So we just take the brush. Let me see if I can get it on the right angle so you can really see. And I don't want, um, I really don't want any stiff peaks on here. This, we don't want this to look like we're decorating it like a cake. We want just texture, like it's been aged, you know, over a lot of years. We're gonna give it that look just in these few minutes it takes us to do this. And you can just kind of tilt your piece back and forth so you can see the places it is and the places that still need the salt wash to be knocked down a little bit. If you have little spots like right there, I've kind of got just a little too much texture, so I'm just literally pressing that down into itself. Um, at this point, it's very it's textured. It feels like a, almost like a modeling paste. That's just a little thick right there, so I'm gonna just move it over a little and then knock off those peaks. Same here, knock that little peak off. And if it's too wet, you will pick it up and kind of drag it in places, but that's okay. I've got that going on here and here. It's not gonna hurt one thing because we want this, we want these colors all to just kind of blend in. All right, so our next step, this has to dry completely. Like this has to be completely, completely dry. So our next step will be to put the um, top coat on it. The, it, again, it'll be straight paint. There won't be any salt wash in this next step. To help the speed of drying on this piece, I am gonna use my heat gun. You wanna be careful not to get it too close um, to the surface just so you're not burning it. And that goes with any type of piece that you're working on with your heat guns. They do get very, very hot. So I'll just go ahead and get this to dry. Okay, I have now sanded this piece off. Um, I've got all of my ridges down. And now it's just got this beautiful texture and all of these different colors on it. So we're just gonna take a regular paintbrush. I am using this Paint Pixie brush. This is one of my all-time favorite brushes for furniture projects like this. It works very well in this DIY paint. Uh, this is made by Paint Pixie. I carry these brushes. If you're interested in them, let me know and um, just uh, contact me and then um, and you can do that through Facebook or they will be in my booth at the Quilted Bear in Draper and my booth is D4. So this brush I have used so much and it's starting to get funny little hairs on it here but they're, they last forever. So now we're just going to literally take just our solid paint and we're gonna paint over the top of it. Um, this DIY paint is very thick, very pigmented. Excuse me for one moment, I've got to grab my water bottle. Well, I don't think I want to actually spray that. I think I'll just dip my brush just a titch into my water down there. It's just, my paint's so thick. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do a solid coat of paint. And you can already see all this great texture in there.
Okay, I think that is ready. Okay, so now we've covered up all of our colors. It's just a solid um, gray. And the color that I used is Skeleton Key again in the DIY paint. And if you're interested in purchasing this, you can either find a local retailer or you can go to jamierayvintage.com and you can order it from her. She also has a shop in Lehigh and you can go to her shop and she carries it. She always has stock. Okay, this is, you, you can go to her website as well, um, like I said, and she'll ship it to you, but if you are here in Utah and, you know, close enough to Lehigh, boy, you don't want to miss out on going to her shop. It's just adorable. Okay, so now I'm going to just start sanding. You can see how easily that's coming off. It's coming through. I'm able to see my colors peeking through. So just hit it softly. And I always say start light, you know, start hitting it in a few spots. I would rather just keep going over it than have it um, take off too much. Just depends on how much color you want to show through. So now you can just see there's a few colors here showing through, which is I really like. And the next step, I'm going to varnish it. I'm going to use um, DIY's Big Top, and it's my it's the top coat I use on all of these all of this paint. And then after that, I think I might put a little bit of dark wax or their dark and decrepit which is a patina, a dark patina that also acts as a sealer. So it'll give me an extra um, little protection on it. The reason that I wanna use some dark wax after I use my clear coat is I want to make this look even a little bit older. The patina, I can actually add and get it darker in spots I can manipulate it a little bit more. I mean, the wax manipulates just fine, um, but I do love the patina. It deposits a little bit more color. I, um, just different different applications. It just depends on what you're what you're wanting, but you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to the next step. Okay, I've got my big top here. This is again DIY. Once this is opened, the lids tend to stick. So I just take my little paint can key and just pry it underneath the edges. It just breaks apart that dry varnish that I get all over the place. I'm gonna have to pry a little bit more here. There's a little more effort. I don't have a lot of strength right now in my hands or my shoulder. I just had some surgery, carpal tunnel, and then I had a rotator cuff repair. So the upper part of me is just a little weak. Okay, we got that off pretty easy. If I can do it right now, anybody can get the lids off. For my top coat, I do like to use a sponge brush. I will put the link to these. These are my favorite. Um, they are the Wooster. A sponge brush. I get these on Amazon. They're just very reusable. The um, They're just a much more sturdy sponge brush and they've got a good support on the inside so that they don't just flop all over the place. I get a lot of use out of these and I don't have to worry about the varnish ruining my, my good brushes. So you can see now as I put this on how vibrant the colors are underneath and how we're seeing all those pretty colors showing through. I don't put much pressure when I'm varnishing. If I do, and I go over a lot of it, um, over the same spots over and over where it's already wet, I'm reactivating the paint and I'm gonna end up, which I already have some gray in my brush. So I just be careful not to contaminate the rest of my um, container of varnish. So I don't want gray varnish on everything. Okay, so that's one coat, which is all that it will get of the big top. Just gonna go around the outside edge really quick. DIY, dark and decrepit. This jar is almost empty. It's been very well used. And it's liquid, it's a liquid patina. I'm gonna use a chip brush for application. Sometimes I'll just use my cloth, just 
a rag. This is still quite warm, so we don't want, I mean, it should be okay, but, all right, so this patina, so I can put it on, and of course it's just very dark, and then I can quickly take my rag and I can wipe it back. Okay, now, of course, I've got, my rag is dirty, so the more I wipe, let's see if I can get this where you can see it, the more I wipe, the cleaner I get it, and the more of the bright colors come through. Now, you can definitely tell here, look at the change in the color. This is what I'm going for. I don't want the brightness of this. I want this to warm up and be antiqued looking. Okay, well, I think this is done. Look how gorgeous this turned out. Now it's just nice and antiqued. I see a bunch of colors coming through, yet it's a neutral top. I'm gonna look darling with some candles sitting on it, um, some greenery laying on it, a lantern. I mean, there's, you know, tons of things you could put on this tray and it would just be a very beautiful um, addition to your home decor. I really appreciate you having been here with us. I think this piece turned out very lovely. I hope you can see it with that bright ring light I've got going. I mean, it's turned this very ordinary tray into a very nice addition to your home decor. I think it would just look very lovely um, with a candle sitting on it, maybe a lantern, some greenery, uh, just whatever your style is. I think it would just be a beautiful piece sitting on an end table on a coffee table, your kitchen ta table, even a kitchen counter, maybe your bedside, just something to um, add color and variety to your home. I appreciate you watching. I hope you'll tune in again. And as we try and teach um, you different techniques so that you can do things yourself in your home with all of these great products. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.